Hello. In this video, I'll explain how to break an application down into isolated, tested, and documented modules, and then assemble them via the observer pattern. We'll use the JavaScript MVC 3.3 implementation of Rebecca Murphy's Searcher app. Searcher lets us search various APIs, shows the results, and retains the old searches in local storage. So we've just been asked to build this by one of our clients. Our primary goal is to break things down into isolated modules. Let's see how we do that and why isolation is so important. Often, beginner developers will break things into components too, but those components will not be isolated. You can imagine Searcher being broken down into a search form, search history, and a search result component. A beginner might listen to when the search form is submitted and call the history component to add a new search term and call the search result component to update the search results. Similarly, when someone clicks a search history item, the beginner might call the search form to update itself and the search result to update itself. This might seem harmless at first, but it can create big problems in something larger. Take something like Google Finance's chart. This might be broken down into a bunch of components. If we draw out the relationships between each component, you get a mess. Each component has to know about and talk to almost every other component. This is the handshake problem. In a room of n people, how many handshakes are there if every person has to shake the hand of every other person? The problem is that as you increase the number of people, the growth is quadratic. Every person you add doesn't just add one new handshake, it adds a handshake with that person and every other person in the room. And where a quadratic might not be bad for computation, it's terrible for human efficiency. You can't develop a big application where every component talks directly with every other component. The solution is the observer pattern. Instead of communicating with each other, every component listens to an observable that maintains the state of some part of the application. Components can update the state of the observable, and the observable notifies components that the state has changed. The observer pattern is different than pub-sub because it maintains state. We almost always favor the observer pattern over pub-sub in our applications. To use the observer pattern effectively, we have to figure out what state it needs to maintain. For example, Google Finance might use an observable with the ticker number and the start and ending time of the chart. All components will listen for changes in this observable and update themselves when it changes. Now, we want to do the same thing to Searcher and use an observable to communicate state changes across the application. The state of the app is the current search. A search can be represented by the query and search APIs used to perform the search. Now that we've figured out the higher order architecture of the application, we'll build each component as its own module with its own tests and demo page, starting with the search form component. At a high level, we will have a search, history, and results component coordinating with a shared observable. But that's not the end of what we should build. We are big proponents of the single responsibility principle, that every piece of code should do one thing and do it well. Take, for instance, the results component. It needs to provide a tabbed interface to switch between the API results and the listings of the results themselves. If we build both responsibilities in the results directly, it would violate the single responsibility principle. Instead, we can make a tabs widget and a list widget that the results component assembles into the tabs list that you will see. Results, single responsibility, is to set up and coordinate between the tabs widget and the list widget. For the search component, we will pull out an independent placeholder component. This is a tiered MVC architecture. An observable model encapsulates the application state. Results, history, and search are controllers. They coordinate between the state and the lower level views and models. Results translates current search into additional observable models. These models are used to maintain the state of the tabs and list views. Finally, the search controller uses a placeholder view. So this is the final architecture of how we built Searcher. Building it this way has several advantages. It's easier to test. Modules can be set up and tested without having to set up the rest of the application. It's easier to modify. A module can be replaced with another module without impacting everything else. For example, it would be easy to replace the tabs module with an accordion. 
and it's easier to reuse. The tabs, placeholder, and list could certainly be useful to other projects. In the next video, we will show how we built, tested, and documented these modules.